Hello guys, welcome back to one more classical histology discussion. Today we are going to discuss about adrenal cortex. I know that when I take adrenal gland, it's both cortex and medulla. I'll discuss medulla separately, though I will give a little bit of hint of medulla here. I don't have that slide here. We'll discuss whenever we come to some paraganglion equation, some sympathetic ganglion discussion, we'll definitely include medulla as well, right? So it's primarily about discussion of adrenal cortex. Okay, so like we usually used to do, I'll just give a brief description of how an adrenal gland is going to look in the written format. Then we will see whatever we are reading is exactly that what's in microscopy. It will be the same, right? If it is same, we are sorted with normal adrenal structure, then automatically we will know when it's becoming abnormal, right? So two things I want to say. Most of the normal histology are picked up when you do postmortems. Because otherwise, it's impossible for a person to get a normal adrenal cortex, right? No one is going to do a surgery for an adrenal cortex, right? It's impossible, very, very rare to get it. So, if your hospital does postmortems, sample every organ, keep a copy of slides for you, use it whenever you have a query when you discuss about the pathology. Because when you know want to know abnormal, we have to know normal, right? That's what we'll be doing in the entire module of histology discussion, right? So, adrenal cortex has an extremely thin capsule here, right? The adrenal gland will have a capsule here. Below the capsule, the first layer is your glomerulosa. You will never forget this, right? GFR, the mnemonic which you have been reading from the first year of MBBS. Glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis. It's called glomerulosa because the cells kind of looks like a glomeruli, right? So what happens is, they'll be a little bit rounded, more of pinkish, uh, sorry, bluish cell. They don't have much of a clear vacuolated cytoplasm like the rest of the adrenal gland, majority of the adrenal gland. They'll, have, they'll be very compact nests of cells with cells surrounding them. Very little or if not, no cytoplasm at all, but very little clear cytoplasm can be seen. This glomerulosa constitutes around 15% of the adrenal cortex, 10 to 15% of the entire adrenal cortex, right? As a first layer. The second layer is your fasciculator. You know that, right? What they do secrete your mineralocorticoids, fasciculator secrete your glucocorticoids, so steroids, right? And reticularis secretes your androgens, right? So fasciculator, the function is to secrete glucocorticoids, steroids which means the cytoplasm will be abundant with steroids or fat. So fasciculator cytoplasm has to be clear in appearance. It will be bubbly, clear cytoplasm. And fasciculator, like the name says, the cells will be in the trabeculae or fascicles. The cells will be like this. The cells will be like this. They will be perfectly arranged trabeculae or fascicles, right? When you look at them, most of them will have a two cell thickness. It will, entire fasciculae will have two cells. Two cells forms a single trabeculae or a single fascicle. That's fasciculata. And fasciculata will have completely clear cytoplasm. It's easily evident. You look at fasciculata once, you'll never ever forget it, right? Then fasciculata is a predominant guy. It's around 70 to 80 percent of the entire adrenal cortex is by zona fasciculata. And it's clear in the form of a trabeculae. When you come to reticularis, so reticularis is kind of tiny genius. And reticularis, if you look at a cell, you can easily pick up reticularis differentiating from other two layers because reticularis will have a pinkish cytoplasm which is neither in glomerulosa or in fasciculata. And reticularis has a classical brown pigment. They do have lipofusion. I don't have the brown, brown color, so I'm using the black color to draw. Classical lipofusion pigment will be seen in reticularis, right? That's about the adrenal cortex. When you come to medulla, anything medulla is going to be soft, will have rich blood supply. So it will have abundant vasculature compared to your cortex, first one. That's uniform for every medulla in the body, right? Then medulla will have your sympathetic ganglia. Like medulla is going to have Medulla will have almost the same cell like a few chromosomes because it comes from the adrenal medulla, right? They will have round nests of cells, cells with a basophilic cytoplasm, okay? And they also do have sustentacular cells. A normal adrenal medulla also has sustentacular cells or your supporting cells, the elongated ones, that's definitely there. That's why in few chromosome also, I can look at the sustentacular or the supporting cells, right? In addition to that, medulla also will have ganglions. Ganglionic cells will be like a squamous cell. If you look like if its cell looks like abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm vesicular nuclei, that's a ganglion cell, right? That will be there in medulla. Though I'm not going to show you about medulla, we'll, we are going to look at the adrenal cortex and how it looks in a real time life of the microscope under the microscope, right? Because things under the microscope will be so beautiful. It will be the same what you have read, right? Look at this. We'll go to the capsule. I need to look at the capsule. This is this part is the capsule. I forgot my cursor here, so I'm just going to use my hands and the pointed to discuss about them, right? So that's a thick capsule here, the fibroclasin tissue on the top. Above that, I have the adipose tissue and the blood vessels. Ignore that. That's outside the adrenal gland. This is my capsule here. The immediate one below the capsule, if you look at this, can I say, I do have cells with round nuclei, tiny, tiny nests with almost nil cytoplasm. Look at this guy. Maybe, maybe I'll go a little bit more. Does it look like glomerulus? It, this guy kind of, yes, they do look like glomerulus, right? So this entire layer where you have blue cells with very less cytoplasm. 
like a round like a glomeruli like a nest of tum like nest of cells that's your zona glomerulosa it's hardly little it's very very little like it's not predominant you have the capsule on the top and this part is your zona glomerulosa it looks like a glomeruli when you go down clear completely clear completely bubbly which means the entire cytoplasm is filled with steroids filled with lipids right that's your zona fasciculata the gfr the f part here fasciculata you'll have nests you can you can see them right it's trabeculae and each trabeculae will have two cell thickness that's classical for fasciculata you have to know the normal right look at every trabeculae here it will be perfectly two cells a trabeculae two cells a trabeculae two cells a trabeculae when you go a little bit deep down i'm sure even in this low power you can differentiate the color i have a clear a background here clear cytoplasm you have a pink cytoplasm here right that's very very evident here if you zoom in a little bit like if you zoom in this into a little bit look at this the cytoplasmic granules i'll zoom in a little bit more maybe it'll become a little bit blurred but but it's fine can you appreciate the lipofusion the pink cytoplasm the lipofusion classical for reticularis that's very very important that's how a reticularis looks in a biopsy right so we i'm just going up zona glomerulosa zona fasciculata and zona reticularis that's a beauty of an adrenal gland right you have the glomerulosa you have the fasciculata in the center and you have the reticulus deep down behind below that fine okay i just want to add one more finding here because i feel that a um, postgraduate should know this most of you guys will definitely know this if you look at this it's kind of little bit neat here but most of the time what happens is in endocrine glands the cellular atp is very very common we call them an endocrine atp i want you guys to remember this there's something called as an endocrine atp okay i'll tell you why this is important here most of the endocrine glands will have atp which means the pleomorphism is common hyperchromasia can be common right so if you see an adrenal cortical adenoma just because there's pleomorphism don't call it a cancer it should be very very florid maybe i'll think of a malignancy but subtle pleomorphism don't think of a malignancy that's why in pheochromocytoma or a pituitary adenoma or a follicular carcinoma of thyroid or a parathyroid carcinoma i always want a capsular invasion vascular invasion or a metastasis to diagnose because for an endocrine organ atp is considered to be normal remember this that's very very important whenever you take an endocrine organ subtle amount of atp don't get jittered it's completely normal look for the criteria look for the spread only then you, I, i want you to call it an abnormality i want to call it a cancer fine keep this in mind that's with today's discussion so very short discussion of the adrenal cortex alone like i said we'll definitely definitely read about medulla in the upcoming lectures right see you soon till then bye bye from dr anjit bye, -bye.